Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. This is Dr. Wang here. The topic of today's lecture is immunopathology. In this lecture, you will learn about the basic knowledge on tolerance and autoimmunity, immune response against tumor and transplantation, hypersensitivity, and immunodeficiency. The first topic is on tolerance and autoimmunity. The content of this topic includes definition of tolerance and loss of tolerance and its correlation to autoimmune disorder. What is T and B tolerance? Factor determine the induction of tolerance and its maintenance. Important factors that result into autoimmune disease and mechanisms of autoimmune disease that causes the tissue injuries. What is tolerance? Immunologic tolerance is a state of unresponsiveness specific for a given antigen. It occurs when the interaction of an antigen with antigen-specific lymphocytes results in signals that either do not activate or inactivate the cell. Tolerance helps to prevent the body to elicit an immune attack against its own tissues, prevent inflammatory reactions to airborne and food antigens found at mucosal surface. Tolerance induced during early stage of lymphocyte development is known as central tolerance, whereas tolerance induced in mature lymphocyte is known as peripheral tolerance. Mechanism for maintaining self tolerance includes clonal deletion, clonal energy, and clonal ignorance. Clonal deletion is the removal of cell reactive T and B cells through apoptosis before developing into fully competent lymphocytes. For clonal energy, the cell reactive T and B cells become inactivated in the normal individual and unable to mount a normal immune response. It is a major mechanism in activating peripheral autoreactive T cell clones. Core stimulation is required for the activation of T cells. Core stimulation means that you are receiving two signals in order for activation of the T cells. For clonal ignorance, fully competent T cells fail to mount productive immune response. T cells ignore certain self antigens because they are located in immune privileged sites or due to low immunogenicity. What is immune privileged sites? Immune privileged sites is certain sites in the body that are able to tolerate induction or introduction of antigen without eliciting an inflammatory immune response. For example, the brain, placenta, fetus, and anterior chamber of eyes. What is T cell tolerance? T cell tolerance is the main process T cells acquire the ability to distinguish self from non-self in the fetal thymus occurs during the clonal deletion, which is a negative selection process, meaning that T cells whose T cell receptors bind too strongly to MHC complexes will most likely be self-reactive and are removed or killed in the process of negative selection by apoptosis. Tolerance acquired within the thymus is known as central tolerance. Tolerance acquired outside the thymus known as peripheral tolerance. In the thymus, there is a vast repertoire of cell protein. Repertoire refers to all the unique T cell receptors and B cell receptors genetic rearrangements within the adaptive immunity. Autoimmune regulator in the thymus induce the expression of many proteins that are not 
typically expressed in thymic cells, such as protein specific to the stomach, skin, or the lung, thereby preventing autoimmunity once T cells leave the thymus. Mutation in the autoimmune regulator causes development of autoimmune polyandrocrinopathy, which is a rare inherited disease in which the immune system mistakenly attacks many of the body's tissues and organs. Autoimmune regulator is also functioned in the peripheral lymphoid organ. What is central tolerance? Central tolerance occurs in primary lymphoid organ. It undergoes negative selection to eliminate autoreactive T and B cells. However, there are chances that autoreactive T and B cells actually escape negative selection and get into peripheral system. This diagram shows positive and negative selection in the thymus. The key factor in determining positive and negative selection is the strength of the antigen recognition by the T cells. T cells in the thymus encounter macrophages and dendritic cells, which are bone marrow derived antigen presenting cells. These antigen presenting cells presented self antigen on MHC complex. T cells which bind self antigen MHC complex with high affinity at this stage will undergo negative selection and die by apoptosis. In positive selection, T cells in the thymus that bind moderately to MHC complexes receive survival signals. What is peripheral tolerance? Some antigens are not expressed in the thymus, and some cell reactive T cells are not killed in the thymus by central tolerance. Therefore, it gets into the peripheral tolerance. What are the mechanisms for maintaining peripheral tolerance? They are clonal deletion, clonal energy suppression, and clonal ignorance. For clonal deletion, some self-reactive T cells are killed by apoptosis. T cells that escape the clonal deletion of the central tolerance will enter peripheral tolerance. Some cells get inactivated by clonal energy. What is clonal energy? When there is activation of cells, it needs co-stimulation, for example, first signal followed by second signal. In this case, there is no co-stimulation. Therefore, the T cells become inactivated. Some T cells are suppressed by inhibitory cytokines produced by the regulatory T cells. Clonal ignorance is the self-reactive T cells that ignore self-antigen. Why do they ignore self-antigens? First, the antigen might be from sequestered antigen. What is sequestered antigen? It is from the immune privilege site, such as brain. There is no access by the immune system to actually kill the antigen at immune privilege site and therefore ignored by the self-reactive T cells. Or, the antigen present at very small amount and they get ignored. This is called clonal ignorance. This diagram illustrating the central tolerance and peripheral tolerance. At the thymus, T cells that bind tightly to highly expressed self antigen will undergo apoptosis. Positive selected T cells will go into peripheral tolerance. In peripheral tolerance, there are four mechanisms induce the tolerance. 
they are apoptosis, suppression, energy, and ignorance. Appropriate combination of signals will result in complete T cell activation. Mechanism of D cell tolerance, similarly, it has clonal deletion, clonal energy, and additionally, the receptor editing. In the process of maturation, the B cells undergoes receptor editing, which is the rearranging of their immunoglobulin genes, in another words, mutations, in order to rescue them from apoptosis or inactivation. Factors important in the induction or introduction of tolerance. First, the stage of differentiation of lymphocytes at the time of antigen confrontation. Second, the site of encounter, whether it's central tolerance or uh, peripheral tolerance. Third, the nature of cells presenting antigenic epitopes, that is the antigen presenting cells. Fourth, the number of lymphocytes able to respond. Fifth, the microenvironment of encounter, which includes expression of the cell adhesion molecules, influence of cytokines and other cell types. When the body loss self tolerance, the immune system is not able to discriminate self from non-self. This leads to autoimmune diseases. As we discussed just now, there are mechanisms that prevent autoimmunity to occur. If we lose such tolerance, then this will cause autoimmunity. Immune or immunological tolerance is a process by which the immune system does not attack an antigen. It occurs in central tolerance and peripheral tolerance. The genetic defects in these processes leads to autoimmunity. This leads to the production of antibodies or a response by sensitized T cells against a person's own tissue antigens. Or, if there is a sequence similarities between viral and cell proteins, this may result in the antibodies attacking the cell proteins. This is also known as mimicry. What are the predisposing factors for autoimmune diseases? First is the genetic susceptibility. Many genes have been identified to cause autoimmune diseases, for example, HLA complexes. HLA complex is a group of related protein that are encoded by major histocompatibility complex gene in human. The primary function of HLA molecule is to present foreign antigens to elicit T cell responses. These are examples of how HLA associated with autoimmune diseases. Rheumatoid arthritis is predominant in individuals with HLA DR4 gene. Ankylosing spondylitis is predominant in individuals with HLA B27 gene. Class 1 MHC related disease is more common in men whereas class 2 MHC related diseases are more common in women. The second predisposing factor is hormonal. Approximately 90% of all autoimmune diseases occur in women. The reason is not well documented, so it is not clear. The other predisposing factors include environment susceptibility. When we talk about environment, we are actually surrounded by bacteria and viruses and whatever we take in such as drugs. Example of bacteria viruses. For example, 
pharyngitis caused by Streptococcus pyogenes predispose a person to rheumatic fever. Normal flora of the bowel play a role in inflammatory bowel diseases such as Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Drugs and medications such as procainamide causes systemic lupus erymatous. How environmental factors cause autoimmune diseases? As I mentioned in previous slide, one method is molecular mimicry. Molecular mim mimicry, the infectious agents possesses antigens that elicit an immune response that cross-react with components of human cells, meaning that part of the antigen have a similar sequence to probably an organ or tissues in human cells. Second is the tissue injury. It releases intracellular or sequestered antigens that elicit an immune response. Sequestered antigens are antigens secreted by immune privileged sites. This table shows microbial infections associated with autoimmune diseases. Streptococcus pyogenes associated with rheumatic fever. Campylobacter jejuni associated with guillain bear syndrome. Chlamydia trachomatis associated with Rater syndrome. Hepatitis B virus with multiple sclerosis. Human T cell lymphotropic virus with HTLV associated myelopathy. What are the mechanisms of autoimmunity? There are five mechanisms. The first three are the main factors molecular mimicry, alteration of normal proteins, and the release of sequestered antigens. Molecular mimicry is a cross reacting antigen, such as the bacteria or viruses, which triggers the autoreactive T cell or B cell. The trigger mimics a component of body, and the immune attack is directed against the cross reacting body component, for example, rheumatic fever. Just now, we associated rheumatic fever with streptococcal pyogenes. Antibodies against certain M protein of streptococcal pyogenes cross react with cardiac myosin, which has a similar sequence. And this causes heart damage. This is what we meant by molecular mimicry. Second is the alteration of normal proteins. Drugs which bind to normal protein, which make them immunogenic. For example, procainamide binds to normal proteins and it induces SLV. Third is the release of sequestered antigens. Certain tissues of immunological privilege sites such as sperm, CNS, central nervous system, lens, uveal tract of the eyes, cornea, and so on. Their sequestered antigens are not exposed to the immune system. When such antigens enter the circulation, they elicit immune response. Other sequestered antigens, which are intracellular antigens, includes DNA, histones, mitochondrial enzymes within our own cell or body. Bacterial and viral infection will cause damage to the cells, and this will cause the release of this sequestered antigen. Although they can be at immunological privilege site, how they get into the circulation is actually by damage by bacteria or virus. They release into the circulation and elicit immune responses. Once autoantibodies are formed, subsequent release of sequestered antigens results in the formation of immune complexes. This leads to 
autoimmune disease. Other than bacterial or virus infection, other sources of cell damage includes exposure to radiation chemicals, for example, sunlight, exacerbate skin rash in SLE patients. What is epitope spreading? When there are new sequestered autoantigens as a result of damage to cells caused by viral infection, these autoantigens will stimulate autoreactive T cells which results in autoimmune disease. And also, loss of function of T regulatory cells induces autoreactive T cells. This table shows the type of immune response, the disease cause, and the main target of the immune response. This can be divided to antibody to receptors. Our body produces antibodies towards receptor, for example, myasthenia gravis is caused by antibodies produced towards acetylcholine receptor. The second row is antibody produces to other cell components other than receptor. For example, rheumatoid arthritis is caused by antibodies directed to joint tissues of the body that leads to rheumatoid arthritis. The third one is cell mediated. Celiac disease is due to antibody directed to enterocytes. The next topic is on immune response against tumor and transplantation. Transplantation is the transfer of living cells, tissues and organs from one part of the body to another part or from one individual to another. Graft or transplant is referring to the implanted cell, tissue or organ. Donor is the individual who provides the graft or transplant. Recipient or host is the individual who receives the graft. There are four types of transplantation, autograft, isograft, allograft and xenograft, as you can see in this diagram here. Autograph. Tissue is transferred from one area to another on the same individual. Antigen present in autograph is the same as that present in the body. Therefore, immune system recognizes the autograph antigen as self-antigen. No immune response is elicited. Autograph can survive throughout the life, for example, skin grafting in burns. Isograph is also called seam graft. Tissue is transferred between genetically identical individuals of the same species. In isograph, the histocompatibility antigens are identical. Hence, the graft survive and not rejected. For example, graft made between identical twins. Allograph. Tissue is transferred between two genetically different members of the same species. In allograph, Histocompatibility antigens are dissimilar, hence immune response is elicited and graft is rejected. For example, kidney transplant from one person to another. Xenograft, tissue is transferred between two different species. In xenograft, histocompatibility complex antigens are so different that the graft is more vigorously rejected. For example, Graph of monkey transfer to human. What is allograft reaction? Allograft reaction is the rejection of the graft by the recipient. After trans transplantation, the graft became vascularized during the first two or three days and appears to be accepted initially. By fourth day, inflammation occurs and the graft is invaded by lymphocytes and macrophages. Vascularity diminishes due to thrombosis and the graft undergoes ischemic necrosis. By 10 days, graft slouch off. This event resulting in the rejection of allograft is known as the first set of response. 
some mediated reaction is responsible for the reaction. Rejection is primarily by helper T lymphocyte, which activate T lymphocyte, which activate cytotoxic T lymphocytes, macrophages, and B lymphocytes. When a second allograft from the same donor is applied on a sensitized recipient, in which previous graft has been rejected by the first set of response, it will be rejected in accelerated fashion. Necrosis sets in early and graft slouch off by the sixth day. This type of rejection is known as second set response. Antibodies play a dominant role along with cell mediated immunity. This diagram here shows the appearance of skin graft in mice. A show the graft undergoing rejection. B complete rejection which form a scab. C in comparison a completely healed skin graft without evidence of rejection. There are three types of allograft rejection, hyperacute rejection, acute rejection, and chronic rejection. Hyperacute rejection occurs within a few minutes to a few hours of transplantation. Results of destruction of transplant is caused by preformed antibodies or pre-existing antibodies, such as in ABO blood group, incompatibility, or pre-sensitized to class 1 MHC through blood transfusion. In, in this scenario, antibodies bind to blood vessel endothelium in the graft, resulting in complement activation, neutrophil recruitment, platelet aggregation, and deposition causing swelling and interstitial hemorrhage in the transplanted tissue, which decrease the flow of blood through tissue. For acute rejection, cell-mediated immunity mediated by T cells is the primary cause of acute rejection. In this case, cytotoxic T cell attacks the donor cells expressing foreign MHC. Helper T cells and B cells collaborate produce antibodies to allo antigens. Common type of rejection experienced by individuals for whom transplanted tissue is a mismatch or who receive an allograft and insufficient immunosuppressive treatment to prevent rejection. Acute rejection occurs several days after the transplantation. For chronic rejection, it is caused by both antibody and cell-mediated immunity, which occurs in allograft transplantation many months after transplanted tissue has assumed its normal function. The mechanism is not fully understood. This diagram here shows an illustration of the three types of graft rejection. Graft rejection can be prevented through immunosuppression of the host and by transplantation in the anatomically protected sites. Recipients is subjected to immunosuppression so that the transplanted tissue can survive for a long period. Irradiation of the lymphoid system or the donated organ. Immunosuppressive agents include chemicals such as corticosteroid, steroid, anti-lymphocyte serum, cyclosporin A and rampamycin are used as a way to provide immunosuppression to inhibit specific T cell activity. For transplantation in anatomically protected site, there are certain privileged sites where allograft is able to survive such as cornea. Lack of vascularity in the cornea helps preventing graft rejection after transplantation. What is graft versus host reaction? In a transplantation, graft rejection is due to the reaction of the host to the grafted tissue, known as host versus graft response. On the contrary situation, in which the grafted tissue may react to and reject the host, is known as 
the graph versus host reaction. The graph versus host reactions occurs when the graph, for example, bone marrow, lymphoid tissue, splenic tissues contains the immunocompetent T cells. This immunocompetent T cells transferred from the donor to the recipient who is not able to of rejecting them. The grafted cells survive and have time to recognize the host antigens and react immunologically against them. The end result could be fatal. In human, a graft versus host reaction may occur in immunologically compromised individuals. Competent T cells present in organ given to immunosuppressed patients may also mediate graft versus host reactions. Tumor are cells that continue to replicate, fail to differentiate into specialized cells and become immortal. It can be malignant or benign. Malignant tumor is also called cancer and can grow indefinitely and spread through metastasis, which eventually kills the host. For benign tumor, it is not capable of metastasis, therefore does not kill the host. When the cell undergoes malignant transformation, it acquires new surface antigens and may also lose some normal antigens. A malignant tumor antigenically different from normal tissues of the host. It is considered as an allograft and expected to induce immune response. Antigens that are present in the tumor cells but absent in the corresponding normal cells of the host are known as tumor antigens. There are two types of tumor antigens, namely tumor-specific antigens and tumor-associated antigens. Tumor-specific antigens are antigens present on the membranes of malignant cells and induce an immune response when the tumor is transplanted in syngenic animals. Syngenic refers to graft transfer between genetically identical animals or people. A syngenic graft is also known as isograft. For tumor-associated antigens, these antigens are present in embryonic and also malignant cells, but not in the adult normal cells. For example, the alpha fetoproteins in hepatoma and casino embryonic antigen in the colonic cancer. What are the immune responses in malignancy? Most humoral responses cannot prevent tumor growth. Effector cells such as T cells, macrophages, and K cells have relatively effective tumorcidal abilities. Effector cell activity is induced by antigen presenting cells that present tumor specific antigens or tumor associated antigens on their surface. Despite the activity of effector cells, host immunoreactivity may fail to control the growth of the tumor. Many cases develop mechanisms that allow them to evade anti-tumor responses. These mechanisms can be divided into those that are belonging to the tumor cells and those that are mediated by other cells. First, escaping immune recognition by loss of antigen expression. Immune responses to tumor cells impart selective pressures that result in the survival and outgrowth of variant tumor cells with reduced immunogenicity by a process called tumor immunoediting. In addition to loss of tumor-specific antigens, class 1 MHC expression may be downregulated on tumor cells so that they cannot be recognized by cytotoxic T lymphocyte. Another mechanism of evading the immune responses by tumors is by active inhibition of immune responses. Tumor may engage inhibitory mechanisms that suppress immune responses. 
For example, secreted products of tumor cells may, sup may, susp may suppress anti-tumor immune responses. Regulatory T cells may suppress T cell responses to tumor. Tumor associated macrophages may promote tumor growth and invasiveness by altering the tissue microenvironment, such as altering the immune cells population and the production of cytokines and by suppressing the T cell responses. These uh, adaptations may allow tumor cells to evade T cell mediated immune responses. The next topic is hypersensitivity. The content uh, in this topic include to understand, to know the types of hypersensitivities, which include type 1, 2, 3, and 4, and to understand the features, mechanisms, and clinical aspects of hypersensitivity type 1, 2, 3, and 4 reactions. Hypersensitivity is an antigenic response. All this while, we have been learning immune responses that are protective to us. However, hypersensitivity is an excessive, undesirable reaction produced by normal immune system. It can be damaging, discomfort, sometimes fatal. The term allergy is more familiar and more commonly used for hypersensitivity. Hypersensitivity responses occur in individuals who have sensitized by previous exposure to an antigen, which is also known as an allergen. When an individual who was previously sensitized is exposed to the antigen again, his or her immune system reacts to, reacts to it in a damaging manner. Hypersensitivity can be divided into four types based on the Combs and gel classification. This is classified based on the mechanism of tissue damage. Robert Combs and Philip Giles, the two British immunolo immunologists, classified allergies into four different pathophysiological types, namely type 1, 2, 3, and 4. This table shows you an overview of all the four types of reaction. The duration, the time before you see the clinical signs, characteristics, and some examples to it. Type 1 is also known as anaphylactic hypersensitivity or anaphylactic reaction. The reaction is immediate. The characteristic involves binding of IgE to mast cells or basophils. Example to this is allergic conditions such as hay fever and asthma. Type 2 is also known as cytotoxic hypersensitivity. The characteristic or mechanism of tissue injury is the antigen causes formation of IgM and IgG antibodies that bind to target cell. Once antigen antibody complex bind, it triggers a cascade of complement and causes destruction of target cells. Example includes RH incom incompatibility. Type 3 immune complex. Antibodies and antigens form complexes that deposit and cause damage and inflammation. Example includes arthritis reaction and serum sickness. Type 4 is also known as delayed cell mediated or delayed hypersensitivity, which takes more than 24 hours for the clinical signs to appear. This type 4 hypersensitivity involves activation of cytotoxic T cells that kill target cells, examples are such as contact dermatitis. Let's go to hypersensitivity type 1. It is also known as immediate or anaphylactic hypersensitivity. Reactions may cause a range of symptoms from, my, from minor irritation, inconveniences, and can lead to death. It is mediated by IgE. And the primary cellular components involved are 
mast cells and vesicles. Clinical manifestation. Commonly, it manifests as articaria and eczema on the skin. Conjunctivitis, uh, which is uh, of the eyes. Rhinorrhea, or rhinitis, asthma, or gastroenteritis. Mechanism of hypersensitivity type 1 involve the production of IgE in response to allergen. The IgE antibodies produced in response to an antigen, for example, insect venom, plant pollen, bind to the surface of cells such as mast cells and basophils. When an antigen bridges the gap between two adjacent antibody molecules of the same specificity, the cell undergoes degranulation and release histamine and other mediators. These mediators cause, for example, the release of histamine increases the permeability and distensions of blood capillaries, which results in edema and redness. The other effects include increased mucus secretion, smooth muscle con contraction, and so on. This is a mast cell. The one in Y shape is the antibody, which is IgE. IgE has receptor that bind to the mast cell. When there is a cross-linking of immunoglobulins with the antigen, such as here, it causes degranulation, thereby the granules are released. This is a micrograph of pollen grains, and this is a mite on fabric. Inhaled antigens such as these are a common cause of localized anaphylysis, which causes type 1 hypersensitivity. What is the diagnostic test for immediate hypersensitivity? The diagnostic test that can be done include skin prick test, measurement of total IgE, and skin patch test. For skin prick test, briefly, the allergen is introduced into the skin, which leads to the release of preformed mediators. And it is characterized by erythema and edema, which is known as wheel and flare. And the size uh, of the edema can be observed. Secondly, is a measurement of total IgE and specific IgE antibodies which can be done by ELISA. Another diagnostic test can be done is skin patch test. In this test, allergen is applied to the skin and the reaction such as rash or articaria can be observed later. Let's move on to hypersensitivity type 2. It is also known as the cytotoxic hypersensitivity may affect a variety of organs and tissues. Antibody directed against cell surface or tissue antigens which activates complement system. These antigens are normally endogenous but can be exogenous if something were introduced into the body. Hypersensitivity type 2 is mediated by antibodies such as IgM and IgG which in turn activate the complement system. The activated complement system subsequently lies the affected cell, which might be either a foreign cell or a, or a host cell that carries a foreign antigenic determinant on its surface. Mechanism of damage of type 2 hypersensitivity can be via a few different mechanisms. It can be complement dependent or can involve antibody-dependent cellular cytotoxicity, ADCC, which is the destruction of the whole cells. For complement-dependent antigen, which binds to antibody, will activate the complement system. When the complement system is activated, it causes opsonization, causes cells to be attracted to the site and, st and stimulate chemoattractant and eventually leads to cell lysis. 
For antibody dependent cellular cytotoxicity destruction of the host cells, host cells coated with antibody are killed through an extracellular non phagocytic process involving leukocytes that binds to the host by their specific FC receptor. ADCC can be mediated by different leukocytes, for example, nat natural killer cells, monocytes, neutrophils, eosinophils. It plays a significant role in large holes such as parasites, tumor, where host is too large for ingestion by phagocytosis. The diseases associated with hypersensitivity type 2 include, for example, drug-induced hemolytic anemia, granulocyte, granulocytopenia, thrombocytopenia, myasthenia gravis, grave disease, hemolytic transfusion reaction, and hemolytic disease of the newborn, which is also known as recess incompatibility. The first example is ABO transfusion reaction. If red blood cells are destroyed as a result of reacting with circulating antibodies, then it is a transfusion reaction. To explain this, when the transfusion is incompatible, for example, when type B blood is transfused into a recipient with type A blood, the antigens on the type B blood cells will react with anti-B antibodies in the recipient serum. The antigen antibody reaction will activate the complement system, which in turn causes lysis of the donor's red blood cells as they enter the recipient system. Another example is hemolytic disease of the newborn. If you look at the picture here, if recess positive father and recess negative mother conceive a baby, conceive a recess positive baby, first pregnancy, usually not a problem. Mother's blood circulation is separated from the baby. However, at birth of newborn or if there is a miscarriage or abortion, Recess positive red blood cell enter mother blood circulation. Therefore, the mother immune system now can recognize the cells as foreign and develop anti recess positive antibodies. The problem occurs only in the subsequent pregnancy. If the baby has recess positive blood and he will develop the recess disease. Even though the blood circulation of the mother is separated from the child, antibodies of the mother can cross placenta and enter bloodstream of the baby, and this causes red blood cell to be killed. Prevention can be done by giving anti recess or anti-D this uh, injection. This prevents women from producing antibodies against recess D to prevent sensitization. Type 3 hypersensitivity is also known as immune complex reaction. It occurs when antigen antibody complexes induce an inflammatory response in tissue. When there is an antigen antibody response, they will be complex form. These circulating complexes are normally removed by phagocytic cells. However, when large quantities of immune complexes are formed in the circulation, it will be deposited in the tissue and this trigger hypersensitivity type 3. This reaction can be either systemic or localized. The deposition of immune complexes normally in tissues, especially kidney, skin, joint, choroid plexus, eyes. The escape circular complex circulate in the blood, pass between endothelial cells of the blood vessel and become trapped in the basement membrane beneath the cells. In this location, they will activate complement system and cause inflammatory reaction. This is one of the mechanism of complement system. This will attract the neutrophils that release enzymes. Repeated introduction of the same antigen can lead to more serious inflammatory reaction, which causes 
damage to the basement membrane. This diagram here shows the mechanism of type 3 hypersensitivity. Firstly, intermediate sized immune complex deposited in the tissue. The deposited immune complex will activate the complement system. When complement system is activated, it causes opsonization, lysis, or attract neutrophils to the sites. When that happens, they, they will have neutrophils adherence and degranulations. That is how it causes destruction to the tissue membrane. This is another diagram to illustrate type 3 hypersensitivity. Immune complexes are deposited in the wall of blood vessel. The presence of immune complexes activate complement and attract inflammatory cells such as neutrophils. Once the complement system is activated, there will be release of other mediators that will attract neutrophils to the site and this causes damage to the tissue membrane. One good example to illustrate this is post-streptococcal glomerular nephritis. This table here shows the diseases associated with type 3 hypersensitivity. Some of the examples are rheumatoid arthritis, SLV, glomerular nephritis, bacterial infective endocarditis, the streptococcal infection, and infectious mononeclosis. The last type of hypersensitivity is the delayed cell mediated reaction. It involves cell mediated immune responses that are caused mainly by T cells. When T cells is activated by antigen presented by antigen presenting cells, the T cells is triggered and released in appropriately large amount of cytokines. Some attract and activate other mononuclear cells which are not antigen specific. When it is not antigen specific, it causes deleterious outcome. These cell mediated reactions are not apparent for a day or more. Why is this so? A major factor in the delay is the time required for the participating T cells and macrophages to migrate to and accumulate near the foreign antigens. For example, foreign tissues, allograft reactions, intracellular organisms such as viruses, mycobacteria fungi, soluble proteins which include chemical capable of penetrating skin, coupling with uh, body proteins. What is the mechanism of injury for type 4 hypersensitivity? When certain foreign antigen being phagocytes by macrophages and then presented to T-cell receptor, it will cause T-cell to proliferate into mature differentiated T-cells and memory cells. This is known as sensitization. When a sensitized person re-exposed to the same antigen, a delayed type hypersensitivity reactions might re occur. Memory cells from the initial exposure activate T cell clones, which release destructive cytokines in their interaction with the target antigen. And this delayed type sense hypersensitivity normally will involve CD8 cells. Somehow it can also involve CD4, but CD8 is the main player. Some cytokines actually contribute to the inflammatory reaction. It also attracts cells to the site and activating them. Example of type 4 hypersensitivity is contact dermatitis. If you are allergic to a certain chemical and you keep exposing yourself to the same chemicals, therefore penetrating your skin again and again, and then this will lead to hypersensitivity type 4. 
tuberculosis skin test is a test done to detect the presence of mycobacterium tuberculosis infection. How is it done? Purified protein derivative PBD is injected into the skin of an individual previously infected with mycobacterium tuberculosis. It causes recruitment and activation of those cells currently or previously employed in response to the tubercule bacillus, for example, the T cells and macrophages. A positive tuberculin skin test will present with redness and a probable duration in, and a probable in duration at 48 to 72 hours after administration. This picture shows a typical tuberculin skin test. This table shows the summary of hypersensitivity type 1, 2, 3, and 4, which include the type of reaction, principle, the primary mediator, the antigen, the involved, response time, the principal mechanism of tissue and injuries, and a few examples. The last topic is on immunodeficiency. When you encounter this word immunodeficiency, what type of disease that came into your mind? That's right, AIDS, which is caused by HIV. AIDS is an example of immunodeficiency disorder. What is immunodeficiency? It is the fueling of the body's defense mechanism. It affects the ability of the immune system and the immune system is compromised or entirely absent to fight against infectious diseases and cancer. It affects the hormostatic system in the body. It varies in severity, can be mild to severe. There are two types of immunodeficiency disorders. Primary immunodeficiencies, which is caused by congenital or inherited. The other one is secondary immunodeficiency, which is acquired. Primary immunodeficiency diseases or PID, to date, there are over 250 different primary immunodeficiencies have been identified and reported. It is less common or relatively rare compared to secondary immunodeficiency diseases. It occurs as a result of a gene defect, can affect almost any components of the immune response, which include the inner responses and cell mediated responses. Primary immunodeficiency diseases usually present at birth and are usually hereditary. The manifestation is evident during infancy or childhood. However, some disorders, for example, the common variable immunodeficiency, are only manifest uh, in the adulthood. For the epidemiology, it prevalence in US is the prevalence in US is one in one in one thousand two hundred. It is estimated that six million people is having primary immunodeficiency diseases worldwide, but only twenty seven thousand to sixty thousand have been identified. In Malaysia, only fifty one cases was identified from a studies performed from 1987 to 2007 from four hospitals. This table shows the types of primary immunodeficiency, which include the deficient component, the diseases, and the cause of the infection. For example, deficient in B lymphocytes can cause Bruton disease and the typical causative agents are such as Staphylococcus, uh, strep pyogenes, strep pneumonia, and so forth. Secondary immune deficiency diseases occurs as a result of an acquired impairment of the function of B cells and T cells and also caused by other underlying diseases state or environmental factors. In overall, secondary immunodeficiencies can be caused by 
systemic disorders such as diabetes mellitus, malnutrition, hepatitis or HIV infection. Immunosuppressive treatments such as cytotoxic chemotherapy, bone marrow ablation before transplantation or radiation therapy. Prolonged critical illness due to infection, surgery or trauma in the young, elderly or hospitalized patient. It is more common. Secondary immunodeficiency is more common compared to primary immunodeficiency. It can be reversible if the underlying cause is resolved compared to primary immunodeficiency in which it is based on genetic. The disease onset is irrespective of age. The best known example for secondary immune, immunodeficiency disease is the HIV infection. This table shows a list of secondary immunodeficiency diseases that caused by the deficiency in innate and adaptive immunity. Examples of secondary immunodeficiency disease are such as burns, cancer, malnutrition, aging, and infection. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you so much. If you have any question, please feel free to send me an email or WhatsApp me. Thank you.